to Ibisu Station now to meet up with our friends. We're gonna go to Tokyo Station, walk around and do some shopping and, um, and we're going to eat at a fancy beef meat place. Hopefully it'll be good. Hey, it's future me. I didn't get that many clips of the character street or our fancy beef brunch. So I'll be a talking head for the majority of this video. Get excited. On my latest trip to Japan, back in February, pre-quarantine, crazy COVID times, we shopped around the character street at Tokyo Station, and afterwards I had the fanciest brunch of my life, top tier Yonezawa Wagyu steak at Yonezawa Wagyu Oki, right smack dab next to the character street underground. I just wanted to sit down with you guys to talk about my experience, and what you can expect if you visit Character Street and decide that you want to have some beef right afterwards or before. I don't know, maybe you want to exercise all of that meat afterwards instead. You do you. Good morning from Tokyo. This is our balcony slash patio. It's still like 40, 50 degrees, so I don't know if we're gonna be using it this much, but yeah, it's a beautiful morning. Here's my look and my mess. Hello. <laughs> Tokyo Character Street contains about 30 stores and is your one-stop shop for anything manga, anime, or cute character related. It's located conveniently at Tokyo Station, so you can take transportation from any other station and get right there, get your shopping on. When we arrived, the stores just open at around 10 a.m. and it took about 45 minutes for us to go through all the stores. It could take longer if you want to visit all of them, but we really only went into four or five stores because at least my husband and I were looking for really specific merchandise. Because the stores are right next to each other, you can really just dip in and out and really do some express shopping efficiently. Unless you like to peruse, which, you know, you can do that too. There's so many cool and adorable things to gawk at if you just want to do some window shopping. Even though we arrived when the stores pretty much just opened, there was already so many people there, Japanese and foreigners alike. Now what stores? will you find strolling down the street? Shonen Jump, which I bring up top because it's the most iconic manga collection magazine featuring famous or infamous series such as One Piece, Yu-Gi-Oh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and of course, Naruto. There's so many more series that I can't name. What I find super neat is that you can pick up notebooks, bags, pens, whatever souvenir memorabilia you want all in one store. Any series that ran in Shonen Jump, you can pick up here. And of course, there has to be a Pokemon store at a character street. There are Pokemon stores uh, in different parts of Tokyo. They have different locations, but if you're here, you can at least start getting some bits and bobs and then head over to the other stores or come here after you shop at the other stores. I mean, you can never have enough Pokemon. <laughs> now the Sumiko Garashi store. I actually have some footage from this store just because I love the kind of chill, soft vibe and I wanted to capture it. But what I found out is that a lot of stores now sell complete surprise box sets. Meaning before you had to buy individual surprise boxes 
in hopes that you would get the part of the collection or the scene, the character that you wanted. And it's possible you would never get it because you would have to buy like 20 of them. But now a lot of stores are selling complete sets. So not only will you get the scene or character that you want, you can get all of the scenes or characters and have the entire collection to display at home. I actually picked up the Sumiko Garashi Four Seasons set and I posted a haul on that, so make sure you check that out after this video. You can see what I'm talking about and get more Sumiko Garashi cuteness. So yeah, check the store out. Oh my god, just cuteness overload. Then we have the Lego store. The Lego store isn't Japanese, but it'd be interesting to see how it compares to the Danish flagship store. I imagine that it's pretty close because Japanese standards are really high when it comes to store funds and uh, making sure that they provide quality with their shopping experience and what they provide. One of my most favorite stores that I went into and I bought too many things, but to be fair, I bought those things for other people as souvenirs, was the Capybara character store. Oh my god, I wanted everything. And they actually had some things on sale, like clothing. I seriously wanted to buy everything cuddly in the store, like the giant plush that was $300. I don't know how I would fit that on the plane. I don't even think it'll fit in the upper luggage compartment. <laughs> and for a whole category of stores that you might not expect, there are TV station stores for TBS, TV Asahi, Fuji TV, etc. So if you're into specific drama or variety shows like London Hearts or comedy like Ame Talk, or even anime series that are shown on specific channels. For example, Fruits Basket aired on Fuji TV. So when I went into the Fuji TV store, I found a lot of Fruits Basket merchandise. So it's worth it to note or find out where your favorite shows are airing. Uh, if you don't know that yet, if you're a fan, maybe you do. You can make sure to head over to that store and find whatever you need. And of course, there are many more stores. Rilakkuma, we have the Hello Kitty store. Of course, they would need representation. And then also European characters like Miffy or Moomin. So, ugh, there's like something for everyone of all ages. Whether you need something for the bedroom, the kitchen, your office, there are all the goods to make your life adorable. Now, of course, I didn't rattle off all 30 stores. We'd be here forever. Uh, this is just a quick overview. So I highly recommend that ahead of time, you make a list and make a mental note of where you want to hit up. Unless you know you just want to walk around and soak everything all in. That's totally fine too. Oh, and all the shops are tax free. So before you start shopping, make your way over to the tax free counter where they'll first verify your passport. And then when you're done shopping on the street, bring all your merchandise paid for. You have to pay for it at the store with tax and they will return the total amount you were taxed back to you. Keep in mind that the merchandise will be sealed in bags that you can't open until you get off the plane once you return home. So hopefully you don't need to use anything right away. If you do, you can just let them know and they just won't seal those items. Those items might just be voided from being tax free. So just keep that in mind. Overall, I found the character street to be super convenient for shopping um, without running all over the place compared to Akihabara where you have to go to different stores for different items. If you're still looking for very specific, rare or kind of niche goods, Akihabara is still the place to go. But I did enjoy how easy it was to just go into stores knowing that I would get Rilakkuma at the store or I would get Hello Kitty or a specific character for my friends and family that I needed to buy souvenirs for or for myself. And the ease of just taking the train and getting off and then being able to just start shopping from wherever you come from in Tokyo just makes this a really great place to even start off your shopping adventure when you get to Japan. This is a treasure land of everything that you want. Now on to my first bougie food experience in Japan. Uh, my friends wanted to try steak and we really couldn't fit it into our schedule for lunch or dinner so we decided to just have it essentially for breakfast we decided to make brunch extra with some steak cubes or strips 
It was 11 a.m. on a Tuesday and it was fairly quiet and empty at the restaurant so we were able to kind of sit back and relax. Now some backstory as to why this place is legit and where your taste buds will hit steak gold. For one, Yonezawa beef is considered to be premium. It's in the same league as Matsuzaka and Kobe beef, although a little less well-known. I heard it's gaining popularity now in Japan. Yonezawa Wagyu Oki started off just as a meat company in 1923 that became renowned for selling top quality Yonezawa beef. They created two storefronts since then, one here in Tokyo Station that we had the honor of dining at. So we ordered a beer. I know it was brunch, but steak and beer just go hand in hand. I mean, we ain't here to be healthy. This is kind of a once in a lifetime or once in a blue moon experience. And with that heavy foam, and the refreshing taste of the beer. You know you're off to a good day, even though you know you're gonna be in food coma. <laughs> they have an appetizer of like mixed vegetables. What are the, is that beans in the middle? I don't know what that is. The appetizer was a light selection of veggies, mushrooms in broth. I felt that it helped prime the palate for the main event, the steaks. So this is the Yonezawa beef filet medium rare with some vegetables and uh, like a mashed potato on the side and wasabi. <laughs> because we're not having fancy steak every day, we had to go for the filet, the highest quality steak at $75 for 130 grams. It came piping hot and was pre-sliced, so you just pop it into your mouth. You can chase it down with mashed potatoes or veggies. One bite, I felt giddy. It was so buttery and smooth. It was like a beef cloud that just dissipated into my mouth completely. There was no gaminess or stringiness, just pure beef flavor. Honestly, the beef was as easy to bite into as the mashed potatoes. It was that soft. It's funny how our table became quiet as everyone wanted to savor each bite. Cause you know, you just have 130 grams of beef to try. There was also a side of wasabi that helped add some sharpness to cut through that fat. For comparison, we ordered the beef sirloin steak and the sirloin is the second tier of quality, the filet is the highest, and then third is the rump. And honestly, it tasted almost just as good. It was a little bit harder to bite through, but it still had a lot of juicy, delicious flavor. The strips of sirloin came on top of a bed of rice with some veggies on the side and shiso. Oh, I love shiso. Even though it was an S fatty, I would eat this set again. And I guess I'm more of a steak with rice kind of girl. Let me know if you love your steak with rice, potatoes, or some other carb. Definitely need to try this place, especially if you're already shopping at Character Street or you eat meat. Sorry to all the vegans and vegetarians out there. And I would say that brunch is the more affordable option if you want this kind of luxurious experience because the total per person was 60 to 100 dollars depending on how many grams of the filet or which tier of beef you ordered and i read that dinner starts at 150 per person so unless you're sitting on a pile of gold that might be out of reach for many people i would definitely do this at least once in your life and at the end of the meal i didn't feel uncomfortably full um, or greasy, or that I had a lot of fat, I felt pretty good. I didn't feel 100% full, which was nice because we still had energy to do more activities and eat more the rest of the day. Ambiance was great. It was in a traditional setting. The service was very attentive and they were really kind to us. I felt like I made it after having beef for brunch. Do rich people have beef for brunch? Anyways, if you plan on going to the Tokyo Character Street, or having some fancy beef for brunch. I hope this helps you out a little bit. I'd love to hear what you wanna do on your next Japan trip, or if you have any requests for me, let me know. I post videos of fashion, travel, and food on my channel every week. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when the next one goes live. If you've watched until the end, 
Jot down kawaii in the comments. That's how I know you're a real one. <laughs> All right, have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.